What's up guys, Intentional back with yet another video, and while I was working on a jewel crafting video, I couldn't help but notice that you could get some really weird neck pieces from the profession. And these neck pieces are almost like trinkets with useful effects that can actually affect your entire group. So I figured I'd make a video going through each one, and maybe we can have a group brainstorm. Like, how can these neck pieces be useful? And maybe there are certain encounters where they can really help, or perhaps out farming in the open world. I really am not entirely sure if these neck pieces are just straight up junk or treasure. Another thing to mention is that these neck pieces are crafted and do have charges on them, so after 10 charges you cannot use the effect anymore, and the buffs do go away when you unequip the item. Also, the buffs act like an aura, so you cannot have someone join the group and then leave with the buff, and they have a hour cooldown, so this may limit some ideas that come with the neck pieces. With all that being said, however, let's just hop into it. So starting out, we have the resistant neck pieces. With there being one for Fire, Frost, Arcane, Nature, and Shadow, with all of them absorbing 900 to 27 damage of the resistance to all of your party members. Now my first thought about this was actually for the 300 plus Marpool that mages are doing currently. That nature absorption would be huge, if it were still a thing, and of course in TBC with the damage cap on AoE, it might not be a thing. But there are for sure fights that do a certain damage where these can be useful, but is it really worth having your neck piece just be a resistant potion? Maybe because it's for your entire group it works out? Eh, kinda, I don't know, I'm not really on board with it if I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, the 30 base resistance is nice though. I think where these trinkets are gonna shine is in the solo farming world. Maybe prop palins are gonna want one for specific farms? For example, maybe the shower one in Skolo for dark rune farming. Next up we have the Thick Veil Steel Necklace. I mean, it increases your group's stamina by 20, so roughly like 200 and some chains health, which isn't crazy by any means. But it is pretty solid for your starting PvP necklace. And I can see this being used for tanking situations as well because the base stats are pretty solid and the extra health can make or break certain situations. Next up we have the Living Ruby Pendant. It's got some really good stats for healers, but more importantly it gets 6 health per 5 seconds to all party members for 30 minutes. Now this doesn't seem like much, I mean it's essentially 72 health every minute, so over 30 minutes you'll do a total of 2160 healing. And this would be for every single person in your party. Which is not a bad deal, and it wasn't uncommon to see healers still using this neck piece in tier 5 content. Next up we got the Embrace of Dawn. Now this one has some okay base stats for what it is, and the use of effect increases all party members stats by 10 for 30 minutes. Overall, I guess it's a nice bonus, but it's nothing to go out of the way for. You can't even stack them, so say if you wanted 5 members in your group to all have this necklace, well you would only get one of the buffs. So overall, I think this one is the most useless. Moving on to our last two, and I saved the biggest for last. We have the Chain of the Twilight Owl and the Braided Eternium Chain. With the Twilight Owl giving 2% crit to party members and the Braided Eternium Chain giving roughly 2% melee crit. Now this is pretty big for raiders, especially the caster one. I can for sure see the top guilds maybe having their designated caster group have a rotation of these neck pieces going, so they can actually push out that much more damage. On top of this, I can see top parsers having someone in their group have this neck piece at all times, so they can really push to be number one. The melee one is a very solid piece as well, and we can see the same thing happening to it. And out of all the trinkets we have looked at today, these ones just make the most sense, and I think they're going to play a fairly decent role in our version of TBC. But what do you guys think? Do you think that these are all useless, or that some of these neck pieces are going to change how certain things are played in TBC? Let me know in the comment section down below, and if you liked the video, make sure to hit that like button, it really does help me as a content creator, and if you want to see more from me, then hit that sub button. Make sure to have a good day, and peace!